What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. We're coming off the heels of a big, big win against Philly last week. Sentinels are back to their winning ways. Boom, boom, boom. If you guys are fired up to hopefully see us go back to back wins here in Sentinels franchise, please like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed because I do drop Madden 24 content weekly and I currently have two series going on right now. Sentinels franchise here and the SFL, which is the Smalls Football League. Check that one out if you have not. I relocated all 32 teams in the NFL and did a fantasy draft. So it's just complete chaos and it's a very, very fun time. But here in Sentinels franchise, we have a breakout running back scenario and deserve Deservedly so, we all know who this is. It is Dudley Saxton. He had star development already previously, and somehow he just randomly lost it in the offseason. So if he breaks out today, which I'm hoping that he will, we might have a franchise running back on our hands. So the game day goal today is to get Dudley Saxton two plus touchdowns or 100 plus yards rushing slash receiving. And the key to that is the rushing and the receiving. We've seen Dudley last week specifically had a very good game in the passing department, hitting him on some little screen passes and things like that. So I think it should be no problem that we should be able to get 100 plus combined yards. And speaking of a guy who had a breakout game, he's already a superstar X factor, but your NFC offensive player of the week last week, JJ Ford going 21 for 30 for 331 pass yards and four pass touchdowns in the big key in last week's win against Philly zero interceptions. We got mock draft one here officially released, but the problem is we got no draft picks this season. We have a sixth round pick and a seventh round pick. The uh, GM prowess of your boy here, CJ Smalls. I hocked all of our draft picks to move up in, in previous draft rounds and I think maybe trade for some players. There does look to be pretty much offensive line and defensive, like linebackers, defensive ends and stuff like that are the main uh, moxie of this draft class here. Now, there are some really good players in the first round, like Antoine Springs here. I talked about him last week. Greg Weston, I talked about him also. We do need Trevor Spidell as well. We do need to get better on the defensive line, but the thing is, unless I, you know, maybe trade some players with expiring contracts, which we do have a bunch coming up, I'll show you momentarily. I don't really know how it'll be possible to get any of these players so it's going to be interesting. I'll still do, you know, my due diligence in scouting, but I just don't really know how next year's draft is going to look right now. And look at that. Finally, we're going to have some money next season. Oh my God. It has been a recession over here the last couple of years. We're going to have $144 million in cap space, but we got some big, big name players that are going to need a contract negotiation starting with scary terry probably the best player on our team jonathan allen also going to be due for a contract and he has no interest in rejoining neither does kendall fuller who also is going to be going into a contract year here jamin davis going to be on the docket wow. brian robinson very interesting you know we have Dudley Saxton now, who will hopefully go up to star development at the end of this episode. I am hoping and praying. So interesting to see what we're going to do with Brian Robinson. I do like the idea of having the one-two punch with him and Dudley. We also did draft a running back too uh, last last draft. I think he's about a 70-something Dwight Jackson, I want to say his name is. Yeah, Dwight Jackson. He's a rookie out of UAB. So not sure, you know, how much of an impact Sam Howell. Okay, got to keep him around. Sam Howell is a dude, but lots and lots of players, key players, going to need to renegotiate. And I think we just start right now with the most expensive guy, which is Terry McLaurin. Now, he does have good interest in being here. He likes our scheme, which is good. He values financials. He's happy that we have a franchise quarterback in J.J. Ford. And he is looking for four years, close to 100 mil. So, I mean, that will be a pretty significant cap hit. And we should be able to lock him in. I'm going to go five years. We'll go five years, 122 mil. He should accept that offer, I'm thinking, because it is pretty close to what he wanted anyways. That's a good offer. Glad we got the deal done. And my PS5 says 
I am a deal maker, so Terry McLaurin will be here for the long haul. Taking on the Chicago Bears today. They're one and one. We're one and one as well. And they are the second best team in the league in terms of offensive rush yards per game. 171.5. Meanwhile, we're averaging 69, which is still very nice. But I'm a, I presume that's the combination of Justin Fields. And I also believe that they have Dalvin Cook as well. Let's just take a quick look at the Bears roster. I know we've played them a couple times here in the franchise, but just want to see what's different about them. They seem to be a pretty good team. Bustin, Bustin Fields is still here. And then also Brody Lynch, the two-year pro out of TCU. And the man Tyson Badgett, of course. And yeah, Dalvin Cook is here. I remember he was a superstar X-Factor. looks like he has regressed down to superstar. And then they got two rookies that they took in this previous draft. Very interesting. Daniel Harris out of Ohio and Ben Kendricks out of Auburn. So going to have to watch the running game here in Chicago. It looks to be on full display. DJ Moore, criminal that he is not at least a superstar development player. Cannot even believe that. Darnell Mooney is injured, so that's very interesting. KJ Osborne, Tyler Scott, and then Jalen Harden, who looks like he's about 65 years old. Ooh. And who remembers this guy right here? Paul Logan, a.k.a. Logan Paul, eighth overall pick in the 2024 draft. We looked at targeting Paul Logan, but just could not get it done. I remember he's a very good player, X-Factor, so got to watch out for him. Colby Parkinson here as well. And then offensive line, Braxton Jones, not really developing into the left tackle that I'm sure Chicago hoped he would be. We got a two-year pro, Torrey Langford, out of Pittsburgh, who also doesn't look to be that good. Nick Gates is the center. Offensive line, really not that great. And even Darnell Wright, probably their best offensive lineman. He is hurt, so not even going to be playing. So the combination of not having a great offensive line and then also Justin Fields kind of being that paranoid type of QB in the pocket hoping that we can have some pretty decent amount of pressure and sacks in this game defensive line looks okay as well and then linebacking core they got Julius Sherwood rookie out of Texas he might have been their number one pick he's hit in development and I want to say he was their at least first round or second round pick yes he was their first round pick number 19 and then of course the combination of Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards, two superstar players in the linebacking core. They're easily probably the best facet of Chicago's game. They will be without their number one corner, Jalen Johnson, though. So that one kind of stings. They got Kyler Gordon, Tyreek Stevenson, two-year pro Chris Beverly, who has the future starter tag. Not having Jalen Johnson is huge. So their secondary has taken a pretty significant blow. Eddie Jackson, who just got traded, he either just got traded or is going to get traded in real life. Longtime Chicago Bear, no longer going to be around. And then Jaquan Brisker, so pretty good in the safety department. And then rookie Marquez Marshall out of Wake Forest to go along with the best name in Sentinels franchise, Marquise Madden. I want to see more out of rookie corner Tony Hoover. Drafted him in the first round, had to trade up with Green Bay Packers to get him 10th overall pick. He hasn't really done too much in his rookie campaign. I mean, I think he had maybe a couple pass breakups or something like that. I think he might have had a chance for a big pick in one of those games. Got a big pick there. And a big step up for Tony Hoover would be much appreciated because we had to give up a lot to get him. And I don't want that pick to be not worth it. Looking to get gold in this drill here. Going to be tough. I always suck at the DB battles, but we are very close. And if we could get something here, it's got Moss by Jahan Dotson. So this one need a pick on this one, and we may be able to get it. And I completely mistimed it. So that one is on me, but still need Tony Hoover to take a big step up. And before we kick this off, I promise my 10 year old daughter, who is my princess, if anybody else has a 10 year old daughter, I'm sure they're your princess too, that I would shout out her friend who is a up and coming YouTuber, young kid still in school, but he is almost at 100 subscribers. Mikey Fun is the channel at Mikey Taggart 19. That's my daughter's friend. Go check him out. He's got some good stuff. So we are here at home in Sentinels Field, and you know what? You know what? I think I am going to rock the alternate uniforms today. We haven't done that in a while, 
and just need to spice something up, change something up. The Sentinels uniforms are kind of all the same, unfortunately, but I do like the blue pants combo, so maybe uh, going home to the fans with some style will help propel us to a win. So if you guys are fired up for hopefully back-to-back -back wins, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I drop Madden 24 content weekly, and without further ado, let's get down to Sentinel Field and get ready for the game. Get the ball to start this one first, and that is good because... Want to establish some dominance on the offensive end to start. Remember, goal of the game, goal of every game is to win, obviously. But goal 1A or 1B, I should say, getting Dudley Saxton up to star development where he rightfully belongs. So getting a look at J.J. Ford having an excellent sophomore campaign, only thrown one interception, 535 yards so far through the air. But we know that means nothing. That can all change in the blink of an eye. Sometimes I throw four or five touchdowns a game. Sometimes I throw four or five picks in a game. Just all depends. But we'll start this one out of shotgun. Gonna actually be a passing play here. And Terry with space on the edge, trying to outrun Tremaine Edmonds. He does. And Terry gonna get a phenomenal gain of 24 to start this one out. Really wanna see Terry pay off that huge contract that we just gave him. That was a big one indeed. And deservedly so i mean terry definitely i feel like earned every single penny of that contract he's had what this is our third year right he's had over a thousand yards in every single campaign so far so he definitely earned it for sure dudley almost got stopped in the backfield wanted to kick the ball outside had to cut it back inside dudley didn't really do too much on the ground last week i mean but remember he did more through the passing game and in order to get his uh, dev tray upgrade here, it's 100 combined yards. So it could be through the air. It could be on the ground. I mean, we could even maybe do a flea flicker and have Dudley throw a pass. I don't know. But it's second and seven. We're going to come out of shotgun in a nice little levels concept. And we're going to be sacked. We're going to be sacked. I held the ball way too long. Rasheem Green and somebody else got to Ford. That one was on me. I don't remember to step up in the pocket and take off and run. JJ Ford can do that. If needed now on the outside let's have Dudley block we got George Williams and Curtis Samuel both out there but we also got Terry and Terry holds on to it pass led him down on that one Terry has all 40 of our yards so far picks up a huge first down on the play if Dudley can get the outside edge on this one need some good blockers and we do got him I saw somebody McLaurin I think that was throw a pretty nice block Terry is a good blocking receiver. I will say that at least in this, you know, franchise, I've seen him make some really key blocks to spring Dudley Saxon and or Brian Robinson for some nice yards. And that was a good pickup by Dudley. We're going to go inside to Dudley on this one. I know we didn't make it our focus, but only needed a yard and Dudley was able to pick it up with relative ease. Man, this coach, I'm telling you, I mean, the coach is me. But look at all these TE attacks. He, The coach, who is CJ Smalls, might I add, who really wants me to go TE attack. And honestly, I have no issues with that because I love me some TE attack on a Saturday night. Fun fact, it is Saturday as I record this. And as opposed to going to Bart Burns, we're going to let Ford take off with his legs. Don't want to do that too much because he was kind of carrying that like a, just a loose loaf of bread there. But I saw that we had, you know, the space to get that. Decided to take off and run with Ford. And it proved to be a pretty good decision. Now we are into the red zone here. Looking to draw first blood in this one. We're going to come out single back from the 15. Going to be a play action boot. Look, I'll just got to check it down to Dudley. And I tried. I tried to check it down. Sherwood gets a sack number 1.5 on the day. I had Dudley leaking out. But Ford's windup was just a little bit. And that is the rookie I was talking about. Julius Sherwood, number eight, who was the Bears' first round pick in this previous draft. So far, the pass rush is kind of getting to us. So may have to look to uh, explore some screens or something like that. Look at the window. J.J. Ford fitting it into an impossibly tight window to your reigning offensive rookie of the year, Bart Burns. He was in between about three Bears defenders on that one. I mean, look at that. J.J. Ford, you can't do it any better. Bart Burns found the soft spot in what I presume was zone coverage there. 
and Bart Burns makes a heck of a catch, taking it to within shades of the goal line. Now remember, it is 100 total yards or two touchdowns, so Dudley can score a couple tutties in this game, which he's going to get very close getting stopped at the two. It's either or. It's either or. We need 100 plus total scrimmage yards or two touchdowns. Now, I'm going to go back to Dudley again on the ground, but I do think it might be a little difficult as I did make the game plan to run it outside. If we don't get this, may look to hit. Yeah, not going to get it. Dudley just got upended in the backfield. Should have maybe went something outside zone. And that's going to bring up third and goal from the five. I mean, Jahan Dotson is 100% uncovered on this one. So, oh, they baited me, but Jahan gets it anyways. Ooh, boy. All right. I think they kind of baited me on that one because it, it was close. You see the corner over here on the boundary. Tries to jam Curtis Samuel, but he's never guarding Curtis Samuel at all, I don't think. Unless he just saw me release it. He did go towards Jahan Dotson. Luckily, I pass led that thing to the right. That was a dangerous one. But the Sentinels do draw first blood here at home against uh, what looks to be a pretty good Chicago Bears team. So you always like to go up on the scoreboard first. Now let's see what our defense has in store for Bustin Fields and the Chicago Bears. Justin Fields trade talk is a hot topic around the NFL world in real life, of course. Me personally, I mean, people are saying, you know, the Bears are going to have the number one overall pick do, uh, you know, by way of Carolina. People are saying go for Caleb Williams or Drake May or somebody like that. Me personally, and I'm not even a Justin Fields fan. I mean, I mean as far as like unbiased opinions in terms of players, but build around him. You know, he's going to have at least one more year on his contract before they got to look to exercise the option of, oh, and there's Dalvin Cook. I hate playing him in Madden. 14 yards on the opening carry. But yeah, I say keep fields, build around him. You got DJ Moore, who's, you know, definitely a number one wide receiver. I would say top 10 in the league, def definitely top 15, but probably even top 10. And then you got Cole Komet, who's a very good uh, up and coming tight end. You got some good pieces on defense, Tremaine Edmonds, TJ Edwards. I mean, you got to you got to at least ride out the train, I would say. And, you know, maybe if just and, and, and look, I realize this is a supposedly generational quarterback class in the draft. I get that 100 percent. Uh, Dalvin Cook. Why? Just why, man? Why? Yeah. Option defense conservative. I mean, you got to do that when you're playing a team like uh, the Bears with fields or really any. One who's a scrambling quarterback in Madden. Just something that you have to do. And see, for that reason right there. Come on, somebody gets a fields. Going to bring up third and two. That was a nice stop. We're going to press the line a little bit, hoping that it's uh, maybe a give to Cook. It is a give to Cook, but the blocking was uh, absurd from what's not even really a good Chicago Bears offensive line. He's also looking a little gas back there, too, so... Might want to think about subbing in one of those rookies that you got in uh, this past draft here. It's going to be a dump down there to number seven, which is Paul Logan, the eighth overall pick in the 2024 draft. Making a nice one. I remember we tried, if you watch the offseason, we tried, tried our darndest to get Paul Logan, but just could not trade up for him and make the necessary moves. Seven nothing is going to be your score going into the second quarter. It was a very long opening drive by the Sentinels, but the Chicago Bears are knocking on the door here. Fields coming out empty, so you know what? I think I am going to go pressure. Might be a dumb decision because he could just dump off something quick, which is exactly what he will do. And that is going to be Paul Logan. Got a funny, funny feeling that we're going to be calling my man's name a lot today. Answers nicely for the Chicago Bears. And that drive was just way too easy for them. Did not really have any any bright spots on defense. It was pretty much all Chicago on offense. Let's get some good blocking for Dudley on the outside. I mean, nobody's blocking Tremaine Edmonds at all. I mean, I set my game plan focus to run outside. I mean, nobody. And that's Tremaine Edmonds. Like, he should always be the guy that you're looking to, uh, to make sure has a body on him. But... Did not happen on that one. Logan Thomas goes down. 
So that's no good. He's our backup tight end. Second and 10 now coming out of shotgun. It has been difficult to get a lot of time here. And it's a poor accuracy pass from Ford. Logan Thomas is not even going to return. And that definitely sucks. So third and 10. This drive uh, definitely got to find a way to pick this up. Because this one has not been a good drive at all. And just hoping that somebody can possibly break open on their routes. Which I thought it was Jahan for a minute. Wasn't the most terrible of reads, but we did. We tried to fit it into a tight window again, and that was a scary, scary quick three and out. Given the, and that's gonna be a bad punt. I hate it when it does that, man. This game, this game just ooh. I hate it when it does that. It's like sometimes the uh, like the meter or whatever splits, and it's like a little fumble. Okay, yeah, was a fumble. But that's going to give the Bears excellent field position. We'll try man coverage here. I'm really always going to be having somebody watch Dalvin Cook. And is that going to be a legal touching to pick too? Tell me that's not a legal touching. Okay. That's a pick from Kendall Fuller, I believe. Oh, wait a minute. No, I hit the wrong button. No, 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 no. Oh, no. It was a pick from Kendall Fuller. And I hit X instead of square. Oh, what a boneheaded play by me, man. What a bonehead. I did not even. Wow. Wow. I'm so used to just pressing X. When the penalties come up like that. Oh, that. Look, the crowd's probably thinking that I am the dumbest coach in the world. And they're right. They're 100% right. There, There's no excuse for that, man. It should be our ball. And I also just denied my man, uh, Kendall Fuller, an interception. He doesn't deserve that because he's a great player. Somebody please. Tyler Scott gets the ball. I am so heated. I cannot even believe that. If you hate me forever, I 100% understand. I would hate me too. I would hate me too. Because there's no excuse for that. Dalvin Cook on the wheel. I am so sick of calling Dalvin Cook's name already. And I literally, I literally just gave the Bears points. And rather than being 7-7 with the Sentinels having the ball, now it's 7-14 with our backs against the wall. On the mic, it's CJ Smalls. I rap and I stand tall. Now let's get back to this football. <laughs> now I got to do it. Now I got to go PA cross, single back, X bunch, nasty, because we have to score here. We have to score here and match the intensity. So let's see if we can get some good blocking and hit Curtis Samuel on the outside, which we are going to be able to do with ease. That's why I only call that play once per game. How about draw play to Dudley here? I know we are trying to run the ball outside, but since that's not working, maybe a draw will work, and it was pretty effective. And Dudley gets hurt. Come on, man. You better come back, Dudley. Look, it's it's okay. It's just a little bruise. We got one of the best training staffs in the NFL, I guess. He should be okay. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Dudley is going to come back. That is awesome because... That would have, like, essentially <laughs> defeated the purpose of the whole episode, right? So I'm uh, really glad that my man is able to come back. We're going to try to run outside again here. Got to get this playoff. I should probably run it to the left, but I'm not going to. I'm going to run it to the right. Going to try to cut back inside. That play was doomed from the start. And Dudley not having the best of times out here. If I'm being perfectly honest, he's kind of kind of struggling a little bit. So... Hopefully, maybe maybe we'll switch the focus to run inside after the half. Not 100% sure, but let's just see if we can possibly score here. George Williams is open dive, George. He's six foot nine. If you fly in the air, nobody's going to be able to stop you because you're easily the biggest player on the field probably of any position. And George has been a really great option for us now. Two-year pro out of Wisconsin. And he is star dev, star dev too, hoping that we can find a way to get him up to superstar because you don't oftentimes see a six foot nine receiver 
And if we can get some abilities on him, equip some things on my man, he could be an absolute weapon. Can't really seem to uh, figure out this, this Bears defense. I mean, this Bears offense. They're playing really, really well. I've tried man. I've tried pressure. I've tried zone. And Justin Fields has just said, hold my beer every single time. And it's going to be a give to Cook again. Come on, man. Why is the blocking so good? Because this Bears offensive line isn't. I'm going pressure again. I don't even care. Can Jonathan Allen, he's supposed to be our run stuffer. Got the El Toro ability. Can he maybe get back there? Oh, he did. Oh, sack fields. Nope. It's just going to be. Oh, oh, my God, dude. Tyler Scott. Okay. Game on, Chicago. Four minutes to go till halftime here. Backs against the wall, just like it has been. Pretty much all game. We're going to come out of shotgun. Give it to Curtis Samuel, who is having himself a pretty good ball game. Also, so is J.J. Ford. Not doing anything wrong on offense. Offense is playing great. Can't knock the offense at all. It is 100% the defense. Just not being able to stop Chicago. And I am going to actually, if I have time to do this, we're going to audible into... A passing play because Terry, if that receiver there, uh, or I'm sorry, that safety drops down, this could be a shot to Terry, which the safety did drop down. Come on, Terry. Catch that, baby. That's what I'm talking about. The St. Louis Savior. The play recognition from CJ Smalls is a 99 overall. I may suck at defense. I may not be able to accept penalties correctly, but I can read a freaking defense. And I read the defense on that one. And Terry with the deep shot to the end zone. If you can't tell, your boy is hyped. And now we just got to find a way to stop the Bears. We did stop them once, but since I am a literal idiot and didn't accept the flag, they were able to score. But a uh, high-scoring game in this one. Hope you bet the over on the score because 42 points have already been scored. And there's still a pretty good chunk of time to go until halftime. Going pressure again. I'm going pressure again. We will get to Fields at some point in this game. Mark my words, we will. I know we will. I hope we will. And it could be now with Dante Fowler. Oh, my God. I hate Justin Fields. We had him. Dante Fowler had him. Did Fields just get hurt, too, by the way? It kind of looked like it. Like he was grasping that arm. Also got to be careful here, too, because the Bears will get the ball after halftime. And the last thing we want is for them to be able to potentially double dip. And why is Dalvin Cook on this team? Why is he on this team is the first question. And uh, why is he so good is the second question. Can we get Jonathan Allen? Oh, my God. Who's playing defense back there? Who's playing defense? And uh, my God, man, this defense sucks. Our defense sucks. Why does it suck? It shouldn't. Shouldn't. But these players are just getting completely wide open. I ran into the kicker. I don't care. We got 52 seconds and a chance. I mean, I feel like I mean, this is a must score, a must score uh, possession here with 52 seconds because the way the Bears are playing, they're going to score every possession and they get the ball back after halftime, too. So, like, we almost got a score here. All three timeouts, close to a minute to go. JJ Ford's got his X Factor. We're going to start out screen. I mean, I have no words for what seems to be going on in this game right now. I really don't. I don't understand. Ooh, Curtis kind of beat his man, too. Look at, look at Samuel dropping the ball. Get me into the locker room. And let's regroup, man. This has not been a good day for the Sentinels defense. And it's a shame because our offense is playing extremely, extremely well. And there's that dude, th th this, this game. Why did that happen? Why did that just happen just now on that punt? I cannot understand what's going on in this game at all. Like this is the weirdest, weirdest game that I've ever freaking played in Madden. And now the Bears are probably going to score again. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Because we can't do anything right in this game. Keep them in bounds. They're going to bring out uh, their kicker, Marquez Marshall, for a long field goal. I'm sure he's going to drill it because why wouldn't he? 
Everything else is going in the Bears' favor. Ooh. He didn't drill it. <laughs> First positive thing that has gone right. And, and I got to go check my blood pressure, man, because that joint it must be sky high in this game because so many things are going wrong where, where they could be going right that it's just mind-boggling. 28-21, we got to change some things, and we got to change some things fast. If the defense does not step up in this game, we lose. It's as simple as that. Going to be an outside run to Cook, which nothing new there. Jamin Davis there to stop him. Cook at six rushes for 74 yards. That is not good. That is not a good uh, stat line there at all. If you're a Sentinels fan. And, yeah, man, if, if – and I feel like we got to always have eyes on – Tight end, Paul Logan. It doesn't matter. It's going to be outside zone to Cook again and not able to stop him because why would we? I should title this video the Murphy's Law episode. Why would I do that, you ask? Well, what's Murphy's Law? Murphy's Law is anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Feeling a little uh, stumped in this one, man. Feeling a little stumped in this one. Got to be honest with you. Finally able to limit Cook to only a gain of two, which is awesome because that hasn't happened so far at all. Bears going to come out single back now. Got to watch the outside run. So I'm going to kind of move Hayward over here to the left because that is what Cook has been doing. And I guess I should have kept him in the middle of the field, but we were able to stop him. But here's a scenario where we haven't been able to stop the Bears. That is on third down. We haven't been able to stop the Bears on third down at all. I'm actually going to user control Cam Curl on this one because of this reason here. And finally, oh, my God. And Dalvin Cook gets injured. Finally, something goes right for us. Oh, my God. Bring in Daniel Harris, rookie out of Ohio. Bring in Ben Kendricks, rookie out of Auburn. Bring in this kicker who just shanked a kick to the left, Marquise Marshall. Maybe he'll shank another one here. But finally... Finally, something goes right for the Sentinels. He doesn't shank it, but that's okay. Bears go up 10, and now we got to an answer on offense. We'll go back to Dudley here on the HB dive, and just really no holes developed. Dudley's having a tough day. 12 for 30. Definitely having a tough day indeed. And I don't know at this point if uh, he will get his star dev. It's hard to say. Right now, I'm just more focused on winning the game. And since I can't see my receiver icons, I didn't know if I was throwing to freaking Terry McLaurin or Bart Burns on that one. This could be a good play here on third and 10, but we need blockers to hold because if they don't, it's not going to matter. But there's Samuel. Run, Samuel. Go, Samuel. Run. Outrun the free safety. Oh, my gosh. He got so freaking close. Could not outrun Kyler Gordon. But you know what? That is okay. Curtis Samuel has been an absolute dog in this one. And how huge was that? Oh, man. Oh, man. And now that we're on the goal line, Samuel has 134 yards, too. I just saw that. Now that we're on the goal line, I feel like the best path to get Dudley his dev upgrade is the two touchdown department. There's touchdown number one. So maybe all hope is not lost. So far, it has been the Dalvin Cook show, but Dalvin Cook is not here. It is the rookie who's picking up right where Dalvin Cook left off, but he fumbled it. Oh, my gosh. Luckily for the Bears, not for us, the Bears were able to jump on it. But that's Daniel Harris, rookie out of Ohio. So it looks like Dalvin Cook may not be coming back in this one, which you know what? Ladies and gents, I am perfectly okay with that you want dalvin cook to be out for the rest of the game fine by me daniel harris gonna be uh stopped there by justin hayward and i believe emmanuel forbes for a big loss and now third and eight upcoming yeah, i'm watching paul logan here i'm watching paul logan because he has been field's best option and there is james smith williams with the sack first sack of the game things are finally starting to look semi-positive for the St. Louis Sentinels defense. And it's about freaking time because I didn't check my blood pressure after halftime, but I feel like if I did, that joint would have been like 180 over 120. It, it wouldn't have been a good time. And now we get the ball in pretty good field position as well. Curtis Samuel is having himself a baller day. And we just got to continue to build on this momentum here. 
And if guess what? Guess what? If we find the end zone here, we'll take the lead. So let's just please try to do that. Curtis Samuel, it's going to be a bad pass. We're going to come out screen pass to Dudley here on second and 10. All hope is not lost for him to get his uh, superstar or star dev. And that's a good start. Ford almost got sacked in the backfield. He is having a good game, almost at 300 yards. Third quarter winding down. Got to make sure I go through all my proper uh, progressions on this one. Bart, another inaccurate ball from J.J. Ford. Very interesting. Third and 10, really, really need to pick this one up. Oh, Terry, no one's guarding him. No one's guarding him in the middle. Terry and Curtis Samuel. Wide receiver number one and wide receiver number two. Coming up huge in this one. We're going to let this tick down to the end of the fourth. And we got ourselves a barn burner here, ladies and gentlemen. 31-28. The passing yards are on full display. Not getting it done in the rushing department. And ever since Dalvin Cook left this ball game, and I have not seen him back since, it's been, uh, it's been a lot better. That's all I can say. That's literally all I can say. It's been a lot better. So first and 10 from the 12. Let's see what we can make happen here. Terry back in the end zone. He caught it. You know why he caught it? Because he is the St. Louis savior. And for the first time in this highly, highly stressful game, Oh, come on, ref. Don't do me like that, bruh. Don't do me like that, bruh. Receiver had possession. I would say he had possession. It looked like he had possession to me. I mean, he's he's got a firm grip on that ball, and he does. Play will stand. Thank you, number 85. Well done. For not killing my dreams. And for the first time today... St. Louis Sentinels have themselves a four-point lead. Okay, so still no Dalvin Cook. That is a good sign indeed. Don't want him to come back in this ball game. And it's going to be rookie Daniel Harris only picking up three. He has not been able to find the holes like Dalvin Cook. Look, Dalvin Cook is a bachelor. He has no problem finding the holes. And this guy here, Harris, has not been able to find the holes as well as uh, good old Dalvin Cook has. So keeping him off of the field for as long as possible and don't know what Colby Parkinson was doing there, but I can tell you what he wasn't doing. That was catching the ball. Big, big, big third down for the Sentinels. Please, let's just take all the momentum back in this ball game. Not going to happen because Paul Logan exists and he got open on that little curl route. He sat down in the middle of the field very, very well. Paul Logan having a great game here. Over 80 yards on the ground, so he is definitely uh, doing his thing for sure, doing exactly what he needs to do. And another sack on fields would be nice. going to be a little RPO, a little dump off there to the receiver, and he is able to catch it, but only for a minimal gain of four. I guess some pass and shading underneath on this one. It's going to be... Oh, God, I'm so sick of Paul Logan. I'm so sick of Paul Logan. Justin Fields playing out of his mind on this one. Where is Logan? Show me Paul Logan. I need to make sure that we always have a guy on him. Daniel Harris going to get the first down. Bears, I mean, definitely at bare minimum going to score a field goal on this one. Um, but probably, I mean, let's be honest. They're probably going to score a touchdown. I don't see any world where they don't score a touchdown. Let's use your control. Cam Curl, the safety don't oftentimes do that, but maybe it's a good thing, and it is a good thing because Cam Curl was the last line of defense there to stop him. Let's see if the Bears go zero wide receivers. They're not, unfortunately, but I may actually just go 60 out jack splits uh, just because I like to do it. Let's see if it's a run to Harris. I really hope it is, and it is, and he doesn't get it. Stopped at the one yard line. Oh man, need to go get my blood pressure medication. And now the Bears are actually going shotgun. Very interesting. And uh, nobody is covering Paul Logan. Let's change that right now. Don't really like Dante Fowler is the option. 
Harris is going to get into the end zone, unfortunately, to give the Bears a lead again. Got to score here, whether it's a field goal, touchdown, doesn't matter. We're going to start out, draw play to Dudley. He has tons of space as well, trying to turn the corner there. Dudley at 43 yards. So maybe he's a little bit closer than uh, we initially thought to get his breakout scenario challenge uh, completed. Terry McLaurin has his X Factor on as well. Need to uh, also kind of bleed some of this clock. Dudley with some nice running lanes. Rookie first round pick Julian Sherwood goes down holding his chest area. Ball is smack dab on the 50. Let's see if we can get a good lead block from our fullback. I mean, I'll take it. Dudley is starting to rack up the yards on this drive which I do like to see, and we are almost in field goal range here and uh, really haven't even had to go to, haven't had to go through the air at all. We're going to try another outside run, and I don't like the fact that uh, that safety is pretty much uncovered there. Let's actually move over Michael Burton. We'll see what that does to the line. It does kind of change it as... Yeah, I got to snap this ball, man. I'm going to get a delayed game. I'm trying to do too much. Delay game. Delay game. Oh. That's on me. This is the Dudley Saxton drive. Cannot take a sack here. Going to go screen pass to Dudley. He does catch it. Has a little bit of blockers. Dudley makes a juke. And Dudley may actually be closer to, to 100 total yards than we may actually think. Ooh, draw play with Brian Robinson Jr. Haven't given Brian Robinson any touches in this game yet because it has been a big focus on Dudley. But maybe, just maybe, Brian can do it. Okay. A wild Brian Robinson appeared, and he made the most out of his touch. Have not had to throw the pigskin at all on this drive, and I am actually totally fine with that as Dudley is starting to come alive. That is what star players do. They come alive when they need to come alive. Doesn't matter that he hasn't had, and I should probably, no, I'm not gonna go conservative because we may need some of those broken tackles from Dudley, but that is what star players do. They come alive when they need to come alive. And I'm not even gonna snap this ball because I want the two minute warning to hit. We got Brian Robinson out here again. Gonna go draw play with him and there's a huge hole. Gotta make Chicago use these timeouts, man. They're not going to use one yet, so we're going to let the clock tick down as far as freaking humanly possible. Well within field goal range, but a touchdown will essentially seal the game for us. And there is Dudley, who just continues to come alive here in the fourth quarter. You absolutely love to see that. Now, I'm not quite ready. Coach really wants me to pass it. I mean, screen. I'm, there's no reason for me to go to anybody besides Dudley on this one, and I gotta let the clock tick down even a little bit further. Let's do this, boys. This has been the Dudley Saxton Show for oh, sure, God. and that time finally, finally wrapped down. I think we go ahead and call a timeout here and just kind of evaluate the situation. 13 personnel, I think we finally gotta toss a pass here as much as I don't wanna do it. So let's see who can possibly Get open, our tight end Cole Turner, and that was risky, risky, risky business. Don't really want this game to go to overtime, but it's looking like that might be the case. I'm going to have Dudley block, and I'm going to be looking mainly at Bart Burns and or Curtis Samuel. And it's Samuel. Why wouldn't he score? Because he's had such a good, good, get great game today. Samuel and McLaurin, as a matter of fact, and we go up pending this extra point. We're going to go up by four and force the Chicago Bears to have to score a touchdown with only 27 seconds left. And who would have thought it? With all the accolades that we've seen on the offense from Dudley Saxton and Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin, hats off to the freaking defense because I believe... I think the Bears had 28 at the half. So that would mean that we have only allowed them to score 10 points. Definitely, definitely, definitely got to back our guys up on this one because I do not want the Bears to pick up some 
crazy, crazy completion. And it's looking like they might just do that. But remember, they need a touchdown to score. Field goal does them absolutely nothing. Got to make sure we shade over top here. This clock can just not tick down fast enough, man. And I feel like why are receivers so open on this one, on this drive? Why are receivers so open on this drive? It doesn't really make a whole ton of sense, if I'm being completely honest. But right now, just let, please just let this 14 seconds tick down and it's not ticking down fast enough. Oh, I've seen this song and dance so many times, man. Why have, why have the Bears just uh, been able to drive down the field so easily? Somebody, I got to make sure that, uh, oh, it's Paul Logan. I hate Paul Logan. Oh, my God. Two seconds and a timeout. No. Bears are going to score, aren't they? They're going to score, aren't they? I don't see any reason why they wouldn't score. With two seconds left. I've been saved by the grace of my Lord. It's knocked down. It's knocked down by Quan Martin. Quan Martin knocks the pass down. St. Louis Sentinels going to come away with a nail biter. Matt Eberflus can't believe it. And I can't even go to instant replay now because the game is over. Quan Martin knocked the pass down in the end zone. Oh my God. Why was that game so stressful? Doesn't matter. Sentinels get the victory 42 to 38. Hope you guys are still watching. That one was a thriller. A shootout between JJ Ford and Justin Fields. Justin Fields had a perfect quarterback rating. Nine touchdowns between these two gents. And there was just not a lick of defense played in this one by either team. I think Dudley is actually, I mean, surely he had enough passing yards to go over 100. Let's see. He did. So look at that. Dudley is going to move up to star dev. Dalvin Cook, thank God he got injured because he was tearing us up. Curtis Samuel, a buck 51. McLaurin, a buck 30. And Paul Logan, a buck 32. Look at these guys showing up and showing out for their team. Dudley had 25 through the air. Tyler Scott played good. Bart Burns, oddly enough, quiet in that one. How about that game from Dudley Saxon? I've always thought of him as a serviceable backup. Psych. Even back in his college days. But if we develop him properly, I think that he could be a special player. Dudley, right back where he belongs with that star dev. Should have never lost it to begin with. But now he has it back. And that will help him to continue to grow as our running back number one this game was absolutely fun this was a fun game if you don't like defense and you like offense this was the game for you but we do get the win in a nail biter and i would say mvp of that game not terry mclaurin not curtis samuel not jj ford not dudley saxton it is one Quan martin who batted away the potential game winning pass from Justin Fields. So hope you guys enjoyed that one. Next week, going on to Detroit. So continuing this little stint in the NFC North. Hopefully we can make it three in a row. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.